Ladies and gentlemen, the Railroad Hour. And here comes our star-studded show train. Tonight, the Association of American Railroads presents the memorable Victor Herbert operetta, Naughty Marietta, starring Gordon McRae and his celebrated guest star, Dorothy Kirsten. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. Yes, another great musical success is brought to you by the American Railroads, which tonight congratulate the members of the Associated Traffic Clubs of America, who are now holding their annual convention in St. Paul, Minnesota for the big job they do in helping to bring you most of the food you eat, the clothes you wear, the fuel you burn, and all the other things you use in your daily life. And now, here is our star, Gordon McRae. Thank you, Marvin Miller, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to be singing some unforgettable Victor Herbert melodies tonight as Dorothy Kirsten and I bring you Naughty Marietta. This is New Orleans of 1780. Little Paris, they call it. And at the moment, Captain Dick Warrington, your servant, is marching into that colorful city at the head of his troops. Tram, 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 along the highway. Tram, 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 the road is free. Blazing trails along the byway Monsieur de Bois, are we? Tramp, 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 now clear the roadway Boom, 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 the world is free We're planters and Canucks Virginians and Kentucks Captain Dick's own infantry Captain Dick's own infantry Planters and Kentucks, Virginians and Kentucks, Captain Dick's own infantry, Captain Dick's own infantry. <laughs> All right, men. You know why we're in New Orleans for business and for fun. <laughs> the business is to capture Bra Peak, the pirate, and the pleasure is to get yourselves wives. There's a whole boatload of girls newly arrived from France. So get down to the dock, or you'll miss out on the pretty one. Well, what about you, Captain? No, sir. Not me. I'm not sticking my head into the matrimonial noose. I'll wait for you here in the square. (sighs) Poor fellows, giving up their independence for a bit of lace and the fluttering of eyelashes. (laughs) Now, who's that? Well, now that's strange. The melody starts, and just as suddenly it stops. That is because there is no ending, monsieur. Where did you come from? I was hiding behind the fountain. Oh? Who are you? A girl. Hmm. I noticed that. <laughs> Tell me, monsieur, do you know the ending of that song? Should I know it? You see, monsieur, it is a dream melody. I heard it so many times when I went to sleep. And long ago, a fortune teller told me that the man who can finish this song shall claim my heart. You see, it stops. Can you finish it, monsieur? Why, certainly not. Oh, will you not try, monsieur? I most assuredly will not try. Just a minute. Aren't you one of the girls from the bride ship? Yes, monsieur. Well, then why aren't you down at the dock finding yourself a husband? Because, monsieur, I cannot choose just anybody. I must find the man who can finish my song. 
Well, stop looking at me like that. Help me, monsieur. Hide me until I find the man I am supposed to meet. What's your name? Marietta. <laughs> You're a naughty one. I'm half and half. Half good, half bad, half angel, half devil. There are two little maidens that live in my heart. And one is so good like this. She looks comsa and she talks la la like butter would melt. I guess. But the other little maiden that's also me has a temper so warm. It's torrid. So when I am good, I am very good in. Indeed. But when I am bad, I'm horrid. Naughty Marietta, come be good, says she. Me no, say me. Naughty Marietta, but you should, says she. Be good like me. Marietta, come go home, says she. May no, 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 says me. The naughty Marietta, she simply will not let her be good as she should, should. We will. <laughs> I will say this much. There may be two Mariettas, but both are beautiful. Thank you, Monsieur Le Capitaine. Oh, monsieur, hide me. Quickly, someone is coming. Here, behind the fountain. <laughs> ah, good evening, Captain. Oh, oh, good evening. I am Etienne Grande, son of the governor. My respects, sir. And I'm looking for a girl, an escaped girl who ran off from the bride ship. Oh? It is very important that we find her. Oh, I'm sorry, I, I cannot help you, monsieur Grande. However, you can be of service to me. Will you inform your father that my troops have arrived in New Orleans to effect the capture of Bra Peak? That buccaneer has terrified this coast long enough. <laughs> really, Captain? You do not believe that if I and all my father's troops have failed to capture Bra Peak, that you and your ragged colonials could do any better? We shall see, sir. Good evening to you. Good evening, Captain. Marietta. Oh, Captain... You are so brave and so gallant. Now, never mind about that. Are you quite sure, Captain, that you do not know the end of my melody? No, no. Now, listen to me, Marietta. I do not like that man. And if he is looking for you, then I shall hide you. Come. We'll go to my friend Rodolfo at the Marionette Theater, and he will help us. Change of clothes, and the younger lady now looks like a boy. Eh, Captain Dick? And it is you I have to thank, Captain Dick. I kiss your hand, your cloak, your cheek. Now, enough, enough. Go inside and, and learn to work the marionettes. Yes, Captain Dick. Good night, Captain Dick. Ah, it is a pity, eh, to make such a pretty girl into a boy. Mm -hmm. Oh, perhaps, Rodolfo. Perhaps. Yeah, where are you going, Captain Dick? Walking through the cobblestone streets of Little Paris. Alone? On a night like this? <laughs> One should have a beautiful girl on his arm, yes? Oh, I, I have for my companion the moon, Rodolfo, and the music of your singing city. Neath the southern moon, for love so warm and tender, by the sun. Sweet, sweet, 
Like that, Captain and Dick. A man must be in love, no? No. No, I'm not in love, Rodolfo. Oh, sweet mystery of life in vain I see thee. Ah, listen. Oh, at last to know the secret of it all. Now there is a voice to go with the moonlight. Oh, the longing, seeking, striving, waiting, yearning. The burning hopes, the joy and idle tears that fall. Captain Dick, you know my song. Only from hearing you sing it, Marietta. Go on, sing some more. For it is love and love alone the world is seen. comes next? I don't know, Marietta. That's all I heard you sing. Oh, I thought for one wonderful moment that you could finish my song, but I suppose it will never be finished. Return in just a moment for Act Two of Naughty Marietta. What is the important difference to you between the public highways you drive on and the steel highways of the railroads? In some respects, they're similar. Both are vital parts of our essential transportation system. But these two kinds of highways were built to do two quite different jobs. The public roads, built and maintained by your taxes, are primarily intended to handle passenger cars like your own and also 95% of all motor trucks, the kind used by farmers and your local merchants and industries. The public roads cannot stand up under the terrific pounding of the huge heavy highway freighters, which number only 5% of all trucks and just 1% of all motor vehicles. On the other hand, the steel highways of the railroads, built, maintained, and paid for by the railroads, are designed for heavy freight hauling. And in doing this big job, the railroads carry for you and all America more tons of freight, more miles than all other forms of transportation combined. Now, it is important to you that both of these highways, the public highways you drive on and the steel highways of the railroads, be used for the purposes for which they were intended. That way you get the greatest possible benefits from each. But when the public highways are used for heavy freight hauling, you lose. Exhaustive scientific tests have proved that big loads cause tremendous damage, and the bigger the load, the greater the damage. Not only does the nation's essential road system suffer, but you must pay with your taxes for repairing the damage that is done. By contrast, you and the nation are the winners when America's freight moves over the steel highways of the railroads, because the more freight the railroads carry, the less wear and tear there will be on your public highways and the less you, as a taxpayer, will have to pay for building and maintaining these highways. Now here is Act Two of the Lawrence and Lee version of Victor Herbert's Naughty Marietta, starring Gordon McRae as Captain Dick Warrington and Dorothy Kirsten as Marietta.
a song without an ending. Who would ever finish it? Step inside to see Rodolfo's wonderful marionette show. Hello, Rodolfo. Oh, Captain Teak, you have come to see if uh, your Marietta is okay, huh? She's not my Marietta, Rodolfo. Oh, then why you come here every day, twice a day, three times a day? Oh, I just want to make sure she's no trouble to you, Rodolfo. Oh, <laughs> trouble. Such a voice. Never have I had so many customers. Everybody comes to hear her, uh, uh, him sing, <laughs> just like an Italiano. Oh, listen. Everybody in Rodolfo's marionette show, every day is like a big Italian street fair. A one, a two, come on. Tell me, Rodolfo, who is this uh, lad who sings so brilliantly? Uh, uh, my, my, my son. Uh, she is my son. Ah, that's right. It's uh, Rodolfo's long-lost son just returned. Papa! Oh? I have heard that you spend most of your time here, Captain Warrington. Shouldn't you be out looking for the daring pirate, Bra Peak? I do what I please, sir. Huh. So, Rodolfo, this sweet-singing nightingale is your son. I swear it, Monsieur Etienne. This lady is my son. So, this lady is your son. Take off that cap. No, no. Ah. Very long, very beautiful hair for a son. Gentlemen, this is the runaway girl from the bride ship. Well, I... And her name is Marietta Contessa d'Altena. Oh. A Contessa? Since you've come to New Orleans to be chosen as a bride, then... I choose you, Contessa. Oh. And I invite you to be my partner at the Grand Ball tonight. Until then, Contessa. Rodolfo, what are we going to do? But you keep saying you're not in love with her. What difference does it make? Yes, yes that's right. What difference does it make? <laughs> This, I believe, is my dance with Marietta, Monsieur Etienne. Just one, Captain Warrington. I'll be waiting, Marietta. Good evening. Good evening. Shall we? Oh, yes. What a strange look you have in your eyes tonight, Captain Dick. You know, I feel strange. I, I don't know what's happening to me. I have the same feeling... What do you suppose it is? I don't know, Marietta. I have a very strange feeling I never felt before. Tis a kind of a grind of depression. My heart's acting strangely. It feels rather sore. At least it gives me that impression. My pulses leap madly without any cause. Believe me, I'm telling you truly. I'm gay without cause, then sad without cause. My spirits are truly unruly. Oh, 
shooting star in my arms. Captain Dick. Your attention, please. According to long-established custom of this ball, any man who wishes to buy, sell, or exchange his favorite slave may take advantage of the cordon blue auction. Oh, no, that is so cruel. Come, who will buy, sell, or exchange? Is there no one here brave enough? Well, then, I will open the sale with the most beautiful slave in New Orleans, my own slave, Ada. Now, since I'm to be married, I have no use for one such as Ada. Come, who bids? Five hundred francs. A thousand. Oh, no, Captain Dick. I thought you were different from the others. You cannot buy a human being like that. Now, Marietta, let me explain. Fifteen hundred. Two thousand. Twenty-five hundred. Twenty-five hundred francs is bid for La Belle Ada. Captain Dick, if you bid again, I shall never speak to you. Uh, Marietta, I... Going for twenty-five hundred. Three thousand. No, take her. So... Ada, the most beautiful slave in all New Orleans, goes to Captain Dick Warrington, who does not believe in slavery. Now, I wish to make an announcement. Monsieur Etienne has asked me to be his wife. I accept. Oh, no, Marietta. And I bid you all good night. Marietta. Master, I am Ada. I am your slave. Don't call me Master Ada. I bought you to set you free. Free? You will set me free? I shall make out the papers tomorrow. I, a free woman. Then I shall act like one. Monsieur le Capitaine, do you wish to prevent this marriage of this girl to Etienne? There's nothing I would rather do. But how? On Etienne Grande's right arm, you will find his name. His name? Bra Peak, the pirate. Etienne is Bra Peak? (laughs) Oh, Mariette, Karen, why you cry? Your eyes are too pretty to cry. (laughs) Because I must marry Etienne, and I do not love him. He has not finished my song. He is not the man I am supposed to marry. No, Mariette. You will not marry Monsieur Etienne. For he is Monsieur Brapique. And Captain Dick has captured him and put him in prison. That is wonderful. But don't speak to me about Captain Dick. He bought a slave like you would buy cattle. Only to set her free. To set her free? Oh, Of life, at last I found thee. Listen, oh, Marietta, listen. I know at last the secret of it all. Marietta, Marietta, where are you? Here I am, Captain Dick. I am here. Marietta, I fell asleep, and as if in a dream, I heard the ending of your song. Listen. I hear it. I hear it, too. We shall sing it always, Marietta, together. Dorothy Kirsten will be back in just one moment. And meanwhile, thanks to Paul Fries, William Johnston, Julie Bennett, and to our entire company. Naughty Marietta with book by Rita Johnson Young and music by Victor Herbert was dramatized for the Railroad Hour by Lawrence and Lee. The Railroad Hour is brought to you each week at the same time by the American Railroads. Marvin? 
The National Safety Council, which has helped make America a safer place to work and live, is holding its 40th National Safety Congress in Chicago this week. The railroads have cooperated with the Safety Council in many ways, and at the same time have made tremendous improvement in their own safety. They have done this through spending billions of dollars for improved facilities, by constantly improving operating practices to increase safety, and by working with their employees for even greater attention to safe practices. Tonight, the railroads salute the National Safety Council as the inspiration for a great cooperative movement, which today is saving thousands of lives. Gordy, it was a joy singing those thrilling Victor Herbert songs. Well, it was a joy for us too, Dorothy. And tomorrow night, you open the San Francisco opera season here in Los Angeles with the love of three kings. That's right. Oh, to be a king, now that Kirsten's here. (laughs) There's only one thing that worried me about tonight's program. Oh, well, what's that? I didn't think you'd ever finish that song, and I thought I'd have to end up marrying the villain. (laughs) Tragic endings at the opera, maybe, Dorothy, but around here, you always end up with me. (laughs) I put it in the contract. (laughs) What's on the show train next week, Gordon? The charming Emmerich Kalman operetta, The Gypsy Princess, and your operatic colleague, Blanche Tebaum, will be our special guest. Well, there's no Monday night performance of the opera, Gordon, so I'll be listening, and I guess everybody else will, too. Good night. Good night, Dorothy. Happy opera. All aboard. Well, sir, it looks as though we're ready to pull out, and so until next Monday night in The Gypsy Princess, this is Gordon McRae saying good night. Naughty Marietta was presented by special arrangement with Tam's Whitmark Music Library. Gordon McRae appeared through the courtesy of Warner Brothers, producers of The Miracle of Fatima. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. This is Marvin Miller saying goodbye until next week for the American Railroads. Now stay tuned for your Monday night of music on NBC. This evening, Kansari C.A.P. stars in the voice of Firestone on NBC.